it up. Webs, you feel like a girl's trip? Uh, yes. Later, boy. <laughs> Every day you get harder to find. Everybody jumping out of their mind. Everybody I'm going to go on the girl's trip. trip. Hello Spirits, so I am still fixing the How to Train Your Dragon script and I will be reviewing the Nine Realms Season 2 after this video. I actually saw this movie a couple weeks ago and thought I'd review it. I actually had to rewrite this though because I forgot a few details and I wasn't really proud of the delivery. So here we are, without further ado. The Bad Guys is the movie adaptation of the book of the same name, created by Aaron Labe and animated by DreamWorks. It focuses on a team of five animals who rob banks and pull off jobs just for the thrill of it, all while everyone sees them as the bad guys, even before they were villains. Wolf Roll Group is being the planner, leader, and getaway driver. He can think of a plan that has a part for every member. Wolf is a character who is, well, cocky. This is because of his past jobs of never ever being caught. But when he experiences feeling good after doing something good for the first time in their life, he wanted to change his life, even if it hurt his friendship. Everybody Snake's role in their group is being the grumpy safe cracker. This can be unlocking money or intel to unlock other safes. And then the moment they let their guard down. Snake's a character who has experienced nothing but hatred towards him, just because he's a snake. This led him to resent that being a good guy is, well, impossible for someone of his character. And the result leads him to act grumpy and distant in any situation. <laughs> Tarantula's role in the group is being the hacker of the group, who disables security systems and such. Her small size also allows her to infiltrate places to hack or hide. <laughs> Webbed is a character who isn't prone to get mad as we've seen, unless it's at Piranha, and is the most considerable one, even apologising after Wolf said they were holding them back. And she is the one that considers that being good is what they can be, just as Wolf said. <laughs> Shark is the master of disguise and distraction who can blend in into anyone. This is because people can't tell the difference between him and being the people he impersonates. Shark is shown to be not quite as bright as the other characters, but that won't stop him from getting aggressive at them. Uh, well, mainly Snake. Piranha's role in the group is being the muscle who can lose his temper and beat those much bigger than him. And his size and species allows him to use vents and drainage tunnels. Despite being a uh, hothead and loose cannon, he's able to stay focused on what's the main objective. Even if he gets very stressed in a lot of situations. He's also a great singer by the cut off birthday song and the song I'll talk about later. <laughs> I won't spoil much about these characters just yet, but Diane is the governor of California and allows the bad guys to change from their ways of villainy. Marmalade who's the one who offers the idea of mentoring them into becoming the good guys and is known as one of the good hearted people in the film. During the biggest heist they'd ever commit after being called out, ultimately lose when Wolf is caught as he's loved being good, leading him to trick Marmalade into making them into the good guys to stay the bad guys. This leads Marmalade to let the bad guys heist guinea pigs free after they fail to do a few simple good deeds. But after failing that, they give him one more chance and that's when Wolf saves the cat from a tree, even giving a heartfelt speech to gain its trust and unknowingly the trust of others. The night comes and they're about to pull off the heist before Wolf doesn't actually pull it off. This leads to their capture after being frayed by the twist villain, Marmalade, who explains how he tricked them. They're sent to prison and their friendship ends there, only before a aforementioned bad guy breaks them out. This so happens to be the governor, Diane or the Crimson Paw, and explains why she changed. She didn't want to be seen as the sly fox as everyone saw her. As they leave, the mad guys split off, with Snake leaving the others. Soon Diane and Wolf steal the meteorite with the help of the bad guys. They try to stop Marmalade's plan, to which they do, but they go back for Snake. 
earning his friendship back, but almost kills themselves. As they're arrested again, Marmalade isn't caught because he still appears good. But that doesn't really last that long, because he's supposedly the Crimson Paul. But before that, there was also a reveal to which Snake had done a switcher job on the inside, destroying the meteorite. They wait and get out of prison, and that ends the movie. The movie was fantastic. Down to the animation and characters they have, this movie is amazing. Alright, let's start with what I disliked. So, what did I hate or dislike? The fart jokes. Just, really guys? Thankfully this is shown like, four times, but god was it painful to see that green gas every time. But I guess it was referring to this book? I don't know, I haven't read the series, can, can someone tell me? Something I'd like to note is that there wasn't a lot of humour, as I may have liked. The movie had a few toilet humour jokes, then uh, the heart being called a butt gag, didn't come up again, which is uh, an upside, but I didn't really mind since the animation and characters made up for it. Alright, so this is something my mother noticed, and that just, who the fuck is Cuddles? Like. I literally cannot find anything about him. I hope this character doesn't return because he's such a disappointment in terms of design and character. While we're on the topic of character, while I like the heist group, I believe Tarantula, Shark and Piranha weren't given the same amount of, well, time to develop. In the original script, I actually had a lot of trouble describing their character. Because unlike Wolf and Snake, we understood why Wolf wanted to change the good. And we understood why Snake wanted to go back to normal aka being the bad guys. But for the other characters, it's... well, it's harder. Now, it's you don't know their beliefs, they just take sides. We don't know their experiences. And unlike Snake, it doesn't seem like it affects them a whole lot. But if they make a spin-off show, I hope they uh, have a few origins in there, or at least exploring them further as to why they're like how they are. And I hope it's written well because we know that DreamWorks dumped a few pennies into their spin-off shows. Finally, I found the twist villain just... underwhelming. Twist villains today are very underwhelming. He was just very obvious, but how was he so obvious? Well, you see here, for, for, for starters, if you watch the trailer, one of the clips had the glowing eye guinea pigs. Who's the only other guinea pig that can talk? Marmalade. It was also that he was the only other animal seen throughout the entire film, which is actually my first criticism. Add more animals. This is a world that consists of humans and animals, and how they are stereotyped is how they are treated. And when they are the only other two anthropomorphic characters in the film, you can guess who's important to the story. Look, this just, it, this isn't something big, I know this is directed to more kids, but adding more animals helps, helps make the characters like Shark or Wolf blend in more with the background. Hopefully they do a sequel of more animals in the main group or background, it's just something I'd prefer. Now, this is a minor thing, I, you can't change, but it was a missed plot point. Let me put this into perspective. Now, the meteorite, a major plot device, is described as an ultimate power source, which in the film allowed Marmalade to control the guinea pigs. It caused major damage to the city a year ago in the field universe, establishing his career. What I would have preferred was that the meteorite made some animals anthropomorphic years ago. Alright, before you start throwing pitchforks at me, there is an anthropomorphic guinea pig, right? And then there are normal guinea pigs. So, this could have been instead where Marmalade over time was the face of good, as he is throughout the film. But, he's also the character who defined animals by their species, what they're stereotyped to be, while also having a backstory like Snake to make him a bad guy behind a mask. This actually would have also made the partnership more believable between Snake and uh, Marmalade. And even considering the meteorite a good thing to help his charade. But no, the Ampharos just exist. And not many of them at that. This movie had some of the best action scenes in DreamWorks history since Kung Fu Panda. This movie felt like an actual action movie, with the fast paced scenes and sometimes they weren't even fight scenes. And I love how they brought back a realistic conversation in the first scene. 
This was something How to Train Your Dragon succeeded in all the time, so I just wanted to mention that. Now, some will say the plot is easy to predict, but honestly, I prefer a movie that's easy to follow along than one that's very hard to understand, even if it's easy to follow along. It's a, it's a fun movie. I also like the attention to detail to Snake's tail. They didn't need to do this, but the creativity used the tail as a hand or arms. I'm not even sure if that's part of the book series, but I just like it. Alright, since I'm an artist, I gotta say this. The characters' redesigns? Fuck, do these look good. The colours down to the outfits were just so fucking fitting for the characters. And the outfits they wore looked so good in them. I also like the wolf references in wolf's outfits, the old lady being a little red riding hood, and the sheep meeting, well, a wolf in sheep's clothing. The voice acting as well, Chrissy Soper dude, you know what actors are perfect for the characters. Even Aquafina, I've actually been told she's bad at acting, but Tarantula's voice honestly sounds perfect for her. And I can't believe I'm saying this, but even Lily Singh sounded perfect. I don't watch her content, I swear. I've watched a few videos about her, but I don't really have an opinion of my own about her. Anyways, the voice was just so perfect. And I need to say this, the song Good Tonight, I, I believe in Jesus now. This entire scene was fucking just amazing. Just seeing everyone in harmony enjoying the night and song, even those who disliked the bad guys weren't made of stone. The scene was met with beautiful animation and movements as well. To continue that last statement, even Wolf later on in the film said that even the crew loved what happened that night, that they enjoyed people liking them, not fearing them. Even the grumpy fucker enjoyed himself. And take into mind, this is someone who genuinely believes that no one would trust his kind, and kept this level of thinking until he left the rest of the bad guys to enact his own plan. Because, well, in the end, he did believe he was capable of good. And those were amazing scenes, because you could feel the emotion Snake was conflicted with. Alright, alright, on to the main event, I guess. But I gotta say, she's a highlight in the film. Unlike Marmalade, she was the perfect twist character. Being an ex-villain is perfect for her character. She even gained the main characters chances others wouldn't. <laughs> Think of getting? The cops wouldn't dare to, and Marmalade needed them in his plan. Diane was the only villain who turned good and who understood they could change. She proved to herself and the city that despite being a fox, unknowingly the world's best bad guy could change. And that's what makes her character so perfect. This was executed beautifully when leaving Brett comes to what we thought was a throwaway line. That job has broken every criminal who's tried it. The Bucharest Bandits, Lucky Jim, the Crimson Paul. Actually, the Crimson Paw was never arrested. Yeah, but he never stole anything again. Which turned out to be a major help in the plot's narrative. <music> While the humour was lacking throughout the film, you'll actually have fun with the movie regardless. From the action scenes to the interactions between the characters, this movie was enjoyable to watch, and definitely one of DreamWorks' better animated films in recent times. I'm looking at you. Huh, I've just realised I've never rated a film before, or at least on video. Um, 8 out of 10.